self-defense myth number nine, uh, joint locks and restraints. I've already gone over wrist locks in a previous clip, which I will link at the bottom of this. I've already gone over restraints in a previous clip, which I'll link at the bottom of this. But very, very quickly, joint locks and restraints have no place in self-defense because the objective of self-defense is to get ourselves away as quickly as possible whilst taking as little damage as possible. The absolute pinnacle of this, of course, is to spot the trouble coming and avoid it completely. If, however, we need to do something physical, if I get you in a joint lock, to what end? Because if, if, if I take you down to the ground, or we, we stumble there and we fall to the ground, as is most likely, I get you in an arm lock, then what? Because you go, ah, okay, yeah, yeah, I give, I give, I give, let go of my arm, ah. As soon as I let go, you're not going to go, oh, wow, I learned my lesson and go on your way. You're going to be on me with renewed vigour. If I hold you down, to what end? Oh, well, hold the guy down till the police come. Okay, well, the police might take hours because this isn't an emergency. This isn't, you know, top priority. Also, if I'm holding you, the guy down, restraining him, how am I phoning? This whole thing, I know Aikido's got a couple of, of hold downs where it's just like, you know, use one arm and your knees. They don't work. The guy will wriggle free from that. If somebody really, really genuinely wants to fight you, restraints do not work. Joint locks aren't always going to work. Uh, I will point you to Tim Sylvia and Frank Mir at UFC 48, I believe it was, for the UFC World Heavyweight Championship. Frank Mir gets an arm lock, an arm bar. Tim Sylvia's arm breaks. You can see the pop in the middle of the forearm. Tim Sylvia had no idea that his arm was broken until he was shown the replay on the big screen. When you get someone who is as skilled as Frank Mir breaking your arm and you don't know about it until you see it on the replay, that tells us quite a lot. That tells us that if you've got enough adrenaline going through your system, you won't notice a broken bone. The person you're fighting, by the way, it might just be adrenaline. They could be on all kinds of chemicals. You know, you don't know what they're seeing. You don't know what they're feeling. Um, if they're on something like PCP, they're going to be completely oblivious to any type of pain or damage, and they're going to be super strong and super fast. So wrist locks and joint locks and restraints... Don't work. We don't need them. We shouldn't be training them. Self-defense works base uh, works best. Sorry, based off of the element of ballistic impact. Run like hell. Uh, so keep that in mind. Until next time, stay safe.